Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to the Blackwell Epiphany. And we had the Epiphany in the last episode, guys. Now, we had suspicions that Madeline was the baddie, but we didn't understand how bad of a baddie she was. Not only did she soul rip apart all the ghosts that we saved, we also found out her attempts to get inside a human body and possess them was actually the thing that drove both Rosa's grandmother and auntie insane. And it uh, looks like it has finally affected Rosa. Hopefully we'll be able to get out of this situation. We seem to be in limbo. Let's go ahead and travel to the exit, maybe? Can it be that simple? Oh, hi, Auntie Lauren. The last time I saw Auntie alive, she was wasting away in a hospital bed, gray and gaunt. But now, she looks young. Younger than me, even. Hello, Auntie? Is that you? Oh, hey. I saved you a seat. Am I dead? You asked too many questions. You always did. Sit down, kiddo. We've got nothing but time. Cigarette? No thanks. Hmm. Nice view, at least. Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? What happened to me? To us? Don't know. Last I remember, my head hurt really bad. I tried to make it stop, but it just got worse. I might have thrown something? You did. I was there. Did I scream? Yes. I I didn't hurt you, did I? I hid in the closet. Ah, good. Smart. Yeah. We were possessed by this spirit called Madeline. She didn't succeed, but we ended up here. Somehow. Oh. That's all you can say? Oh? Does it really matter anymore? I guess not. You look so... young. Well, I take care of myself. No, that's not what I mean. When I last saw you, you were over 50, at least. So I kept on living, huh? You were alive, if that's what you mean. Hmm. Hospital bed. Like mom. Yeah. Well, I guess it was my turn. And now, I guess it's yours. I've missed you. Oh yeah? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you don't seem yourself. Why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? About Joey. About my family. All of it. You were five years old. You could barely understand how to tie your shoes. And... I thought we had more time. But hey, you're here now, and we've got all the time in the world. Is this where you've been all this time? Don't know. Don't much care. The view is nice, and I don't have Joey nagging me. Auntie, is my grandmother here? She was, but she faded away. I guess it will happen to me soon, and you. But in the meantime, Let's enjoy the view. Auntie, you don't seem yourself. <laughs> you don't know me at all, kiddo. In this place, I feel more like myself than anywhere I've ever been. Huh. Sure is a nice view, isn't it? Yeah. Let's just enjoy it for a while. Oh, we can switch over to Joey? Wait, hold on. What's I... the... Funny. What? I thought I might get up. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. <sighs> there we go. It's like they're reading from a playbook. Constrained, drugged, placed under observation. In a week, they'll move you to another ward. Then they'll poke you full of needles and nod thoughtfully while taking notes. Then they'll move you to a long-term care floor. Keep you drugged, fed, washed. And then... I'll watch you turn gray. I'll watch your skin weather and dry. And then... I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's all my fault. I can't blame the universe, or death, or even you. This one's on me. Maybe I deserve it, but you certainly don't. 
There's got to be a way to fix this. There has to be. She's still there, physically at least. Padded wall. The padded room might be overkill, but if the drugs ever wear off, better safe than sorry, I guess. Because all she'll do is start banging her head against the wall. Okay. Can we... Good. This place hasn't changed all that much since the last time I was here. Home sweet home. Hmm. What's over here? Empty. For now, anyway. Eh? Hi. Hello? Middle-aged guy, maybe early 50s? He must have died in that straitjacket. Hey. Yes. Is this Benjiro? So, who are you? Everyone. Everyone. No, no one. one. So many thoughts. So many. Hmm. I can see why I ended up here. Hey, are you okay, pal? I should be okay. You should be okay, but you're not? I'm not like them. It should have worked. What exactly should have worked? Everything. Nothing. Maybe. Regret. Maybe. You regret something? You know nothing of regret. I might know a thing or two. Look, we're gonna be neighbors for a while, so maybe you could tone down the crazy? No, I'm not that. Just the opposite. The folks who run this place might disagree. It's so hard to think. Look, forget it. I got my own problems to deal with. I will bet you that's Benjiro. Okay, um, flickering lights to the right, so let's go left. Looks like a duty roster for the orderlies. No point in reading it. I'll become very familiar with the staff here after a few years. I can't do anything with it. Okay. Oh, this guy. Dr. Donald Quentin, or as I like to call him, Dr. Quack. Age 34. Height 5 feet 4 inches. That thing needs Weight a date with a needle and thread, pounds. or a fireplace. Subject assaulted a police Some officer. Some kind of abstract thing. No idea what it could be. When restrained by a team of officers, she reacted so violently that two of them were hospitalized. It's an x-ray of Red's noggin. It's an x-ray of Red's noggin. That guy was Lauren Blackwell's doctor when she was here. Did nothing but plug her full of drugs. I guess it's Red's turn now. Deemed a danger It's a tray of medical stuff. Bandages, he was sedated, forceps. I don't want to think what they do with them here. Subject exhibits Can we? symptoms as other members of her family. Violent I'm behavior. not just going to blow on everything I see. Okay, I was just curious was all. Four years ago, I advised the subject to submit herself to testing and regular visits. The subject declined. What about in here? It's just a file cabinet, probably been here years. They brought Red in on this thing. Just an old closet. Huh, this letter is dated several years ago. All staff, Don Quinn, MD, be advised that no patient is to be placed in Unit 2 until further notice. As y'all are aware, the unit was occupied by Mr. Benjiro Hattori until his death last week. The room has been deemed unsafe by hospital inspectors. Okay. Interesting. Let's go confront Benjiro. Hey. Yes. Hey, I did some research. Kinda. You're Benjiro, aren't you? Ben... Jiro? Yeah. Benjiro Hattori? You were the last guy to occupy this room, so I'm guessing you're him. What do you know of me? 
You ran those Grace Group meetings. I... yes. That was so long ago. How long has it been? Twenty-five years. Twenty-five years? Have I really spent two decades of my life in this place? In a straitjacket, too. More than that, Benjiro. More than that? You died here. You're haunting the padded room where they locked you up. Yes, I thought as much. You thought as much? You're saying you know you're dead? I suspect it, but I couldn't be sure. You suspected? What gave you your first clue, folks stop returning your calls? No need to be flippant. My people spend so much time avoiding death that we refuse to believe it when it happens. Your people? Yes, I'm part of a society. Some would call us vampires, but not the kind from stories. We extend our own lives by consuming the positive energy from willing subjects. They die, but we live. You're like Gavin. Yeah, okay. We ran into one of your people last year. Guy named Gavin. He killed a bunch of people. He tried to kill us. He's dead now. I see. You must understand, I am not like my colleagues. I never liked hurting people, but I didn't want to die either. So I made a point of studying the life energy we consumed. I created the Epiphany Experiment. The Epiphany Experiment? I wanted to improve the lives of those I fed upon, not destroy them. Instead of removing positive energy from a subject, I increased it. I enabled them to achieve their heart's hidden desire, to create a surplus of positive energy. And I skimmed off the top. Monsters, Inc. And this worked? Yes and no. It worked too well. My mind couldn't take the energy. I went a bit mad, ended up committed here, and here I am. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Your experiment ended up killing your subjects. Even worse, their souls. Their souls? You made them weak. Weak enough that they got, well, soul-napped by this spook named Madeline. I see. I did not consider that eventuality, but it does explain much. Eh? Come with me. I must show you something. Oh, okay. Where are you taking us, Benjiro? Ooh. I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. Guy manning the front desk. He wasn't around the last time I was stuck in this place. One of the few things that's changed around here. Whatever that thing is, I can't reach it from here. That's probably for the best. That vortex. I witnessed its formation. I did not believe what I was seeing. Why? What is it? Energy is siphoning through the void at an alarming rate. Something is calling it, drawing it like a beacon. Something with enormous power. Something, huh? And what is this something? I cannot say, but don't you recognize the location? That vortex is over Grace Church. Madeline. Yes. If she has harnessed as much energy as you say, that is the only answer. But why would she do such a thing? What she is doing will destroy her soul, rip it into shreds. She said she wanted to stop existing. I guess this was her backup plan. Good riddance. You don't understand. This energy, it won't stop at just her. It will expand until it dissipates. It could destroy every soul, living or dead, within a 10 mile radius. Of course it will. Damn it, this is my fault. Again, I set her loose. It's not enough, is it? It's not enough to destroy three generations of women. It's not enough to destroy half a dozen spooks. No, you gotta fry your own soul into oblivion and take the whole damn city with you. <sighs> so, what do we do? Where the hell are you going? I am leaving. I must get myself out of range. What are you gonna do, haunt Jersey? If I must. What about the rest of us? I'm sorry. I'm sorry? That's it? That is all I can offer. I fear that everything I've done only makes matters worse. Hey, get back here! Wow. Damn it! Okay, and giving him that revelation may have made everything worse. Computer... 
go check on Rosa. She's still there, physically at least. Oh, music just changed. Red, it's me. Are you even in there? Are you somewhere else? You're still breathing. You're still alive. I figure somehow, maybe you can hear me. Maybe I'm wrong, but talking is all I'm good for these days, so what else can I do? You gotta wake up. Things are bad out there. Really, really bad. So bad that I'm not sure we can stop it. But we gotta try. We're the only ones who can. You understand? We. It's gotta be the both of us. Because... Because let's face it, I'm nothing. Just a gust of wind. I don't know what to do. Just get up. Get up, and we'll fix this. Somehow, I promise. Please? Please? Did you hear that? Hmm? No. Can we get up now? I... Just get up. Are you hearing that? I don't hear anything. I think... Somehow, I promise. I really think... You okay? I'm fine. I'm gonna look around. Sure, kiddo. I'm not going anywhere. Right through here, maybe? Oh? Looks like there's another path up there. Can we climb? It's too slick to climb. Um. Okay. Auntie? Yeah, kiddo? Auntie, there's this ledge. I can't reach it. I could really use your help getting up there. What's the point? There might be a way out. Something to get us out of here. Why would I want to do that? I think Joey needs our help. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. Oh, wow. Joey's told me stories about how he saved your life. He saved mine too. Only after putting us in danger in the first place. You can't blame him for that. Just watch me. Auntie, please. Don't auntie me. Let me smoke in peace. Joey was so wrong about you. What do you mean? He doesn't say much about his past, but get him talking about you and he won't shut up. You should be more like Lauren, Red. Your aunt wouldn't take that from nobody. He didn't mean to, but for years he made me feel like I couldn't measure up. That I was nothing, insignificant when compared to you. But he really didn't know you, did he? You don't actually care about anything. How could I? Joey's voice in my ear, always pushing me, following me around like a lost puppy. And all those ghosts, night after night after night, I just got numb. Then my brother died. I decided I could do something good for once. Something real, something tangible. That something was raising you. So don't you dare throw that in my face. I'm sorry, Auntie, but I can't believe that. If you really cared, you'd fight. You'd help me. There was some emotion in her voice, at least. You never were this stubborn as a five-year-old. I grew up. Nope. Oh. This is it. Can you give me a boost up there? Sure, I guess. Ugh, you've gotten bigger since I last saw you. Hmm. Physically and metaphysically. Here. Come on, I'm not leaving you here. <sighs> Fine. Okay. The Blackwell women. Auntie, are you okay? Nothing, it's just... Auntie! What? We need to keep moving. It hurts. Don't you feel it? Yes, but I can't stay here and neither can you. Maybe she's been here too long. Do you feel it? Yeah. Let's
let's keep moving. Oh, she went to the light with us. Light. It's so beautiful. After I'd send a ghost off, I'd just sit there and stare, try to make sense out of it. Wonder what was on the other side. I hey. Suppose. Now I can. I'm dead out there, aren't I? Back in New York. Yes. I'm sorry. I should have realized. I've had this conversation so many times. I remember now how it happened. Someone trying to take over my mind. It cracked my head open. Let the universe pour through. It hurt. I know. It happened to me. A part of me escaped. Hid out there in the void. Anything to get away. You brought me back. We brought each other back. I just gave you a boost. You didn't really need me. But of course, you never really did, did you? Auntie, I think... Yeah, I know. It's time. I know how this works. Say hi to Joey for me, huh? And tell him... You know what? Don't tell him anything. It'll drive him crazy. <laughs> I like that. Joey's gonna get some closure. Ooh. Ow. Holy Jesus. Red? Is that you? Joey? Oh my god, my head. You're back? You're really back? No, my head, Joey. Think so? Where am I? And what am I wearing? Short version, you're in the loony bin. You wouldn't believe what's going on out there. Adam is pulling energy through the void. This will create a spiritual explosion that will destroy all souls within range. Uh, yeah? How'd you know that? Um, I think it's the universe pouring into my head. What now? <laughs> it is how both Lauren and Patricia met their end. Their minds could not take the pressure. Their souls hid in the void until they died. I found my way back. Ow! You're not gonna relapse, are you? No, it's bad, but not as bad as before. I can control it, kind of. Well, we'll deal with that later. Can you get out of that jacket? <sighs> um, no. Okay, first things first, let's get you out of here. And Red? Yeah? Don't you dare scare me like that again. Can we talk to her? No. Nope. Oh. So you can't get out of that thing at all? No, I can barely move. Okay, hang tight. We'll get you out of there. Somehow. We, we, I do really want to... Joey, I don't think I can get out of this. Don't worry. There's... Okay. So, let's try the... Fr oh, it's got... There's a meal slot. What the hell was that? Is the fissure getting bigger? Jesus, if that Benjiro guy is right, we gotta find a way to stop that thing. Oh. He's unconscious. I can't do anything to help him. I can't open the desk. Okay. Nothing here. What about the doctor? Is he still doing stuff or is he knocked out? Oop. Unconscious. Hello. The scalpel must have fallen out of the tray. There's gonna be a lot of blowing, Joey, if you can do this. Oh, thank you, game. So we don't have to do it all the way. Keep it going, buddy. That was a powerful gust. Okay. Now. Oh, do I have to switch over? You can what get up. What the hell is going on? This whole building is shaking. This is starting. The effects of the void energy are taking root. The entire city has fallen unconscious. We are the only ones awake. We're the only ones? Why? We have both been to the void. We are immune to most of its effects. But we will not survive if and when the energy reaches critical mass. How? Damn it! Alright, this new ability of yours scaring the crap out of me. 
Still, one crisis at a time. We need to get you out of here. Okay, can we... Yep. Ugh, I can't reach it. Ugh, come on, Rosa, move. <clears throat> Almost move that time. Come on, you can do this. Clicky, clicky. <sighs> okay, I'm mobile. Kind of. Oh, you gotta, you gotta roll, but <laughs> roll, ma'am. Scoot, scoot, scoot. I can't go any further. There we go. Don't cut her foot. Bam, look at that. We are unbound. It's locked tight. Great. Okay. All that does is scratch the lock. Hmm. My arms are going to be numb for days. I don't want to be anywhere near that thing again. That's fair. Vent. Oh, okay, okay. We saw that vent um in the closet. There's no way I'm cutting through that. <sighs> no good. Okay. Is there any more? Huh, there's an old pipe against this wall. Neat. What other goodies? <laughs> Get all the things, all the prizes inside. Nothing, just concrete. Ew. I'll take that. How about now? Oh, oh I don't know how that worked, but okay. Hey! There's a key hanging on the inside. And my clothes. Thank God. You mind? Right, right. Well, that's handy. You ready? Let's go. What are we doing? Where are we going? I guess we're just leaving. Definitely avoiding the padded cells. Nothing. There we go. Oh, hell's bells. Where are we going? Um... Police station probably okay. Let's go. Well, hold on. I can't go home, not yet. The police can't help with this. There we go. All right. You okay? Thirty blocks. Never ran so fast. She's up there. She's gathering the energy within herself, trying to force her own spirit to weaken and break apart. Her spirit is strong, but her resolve is stronger. How do we stop her? I... I don't know. Nothing like this has ever happened before. Not even the universe knows what to do. Well, I guess we'll do what we always do, sweetheart. Improvise. Mm-hmm. Please don't be locked. Ah, poor Michael. Jesus, he's still here? Nobody can get near this building without being affected by the void energy. Nobody except us. Ow! God damn it, that hurts. It's the circle of protection that Madeline created for Michael. Madeline activated it by using a part of her essence. I wonder if we can do the same. I'm not wiping it away. 
I'm sorry, Michael. He's got a piece of chalk in his pocket. It looks like he used it to draw the circle. Oh, I bet you that's exactly what we have to do. Okay, up the stairs we go. Madeline! You! How on earth did your mind survive? Your head must be absolutely splitting. It's over, Madeline. Indeed. I have wanted it to be over for a long, long time. Madeline! What? Please, Madeline, you tried. You failed. Just stop before any more damage is done. Failed? No. I admit my original plan did not proceed as I'd hoped. This is just a viable alternative. Okay, I don't think Talkender is going to do anything. Chalk, maybe? Oops. Oh, crap. Okay, uh, Joey? Hey, Maddie. What? Grab her. Hey? It has started. My spiritual form is becoming intangible, even to you. It won't be long now. Oh. Alright. Um Rosa's got the scalpel, pipe, key, chalk. Totem? Are you trying to use my own essence on me? Uh yeah. Such an action speaks of desperation. It will not be long before you will not need to worry about such things. I use this to help. It won't work. I can't touch her. Look, whatever she's doing, it's happening on the other side. Maybe we should take a look. Ooh, okay. White light platform. Oh, platform. Okay, now what do we do? <laughs> I'm not wiping it away. It's the circle of protection that Madeline created for Michael. Madeline activated it by using a part of her essence. Maybe Joey can do the same? Use a bit of my essence, huh? Well, here goes. Okay, we did it. Now what? Can we leave? Hey, Maddie. What? Get this through your thick head. This is where it ends. Oh, you have no idea. To oh, the totem's augmented now. Or the wait. I use this to help. Is that the tie? I use this. Oh, that's new. What is this? Oh, how cute! This place. Well, no matter. Hey. You. You remember me. I guess I should be flattered. Open the portal. Let me through. You've got to be kidding. The energy is almost at critical mass. It is going to detonate whether I am there or not. Oh. Oh, that's all you can say. Millions of souls will be destroyed. I need to be one of them. We all need something. I thought I needed to move on, but I really want to see how this ends. It will never end. I will never end. That was the whole purpose. It was never about you. Not me, or my niece, or any of us. You see, I get it now. Why things have to be the way they are. I don't like it, but I get it. What are you talking about? Shh. I'm on a smoke break. <laughs> it didn't stop. No. It's not going to stop. No. This is it, isn't it? No. 
No, it isn't. So many dead, Joey. So many. I know. It's never enough. I know, but we do the best we can. We always have. Yes, we always have. Oh, no. What the? Are those... Are those spooks? Yes. Everyone who is lost. Everyone who is waiting. Waiting for someone like us. No more. They don't have to wait anymore. You're saving spooks? It's what we do. But how? That vortex. It was creating a mass of spiritual energy. I'm reversing it. Making it pull in spiritual energy instead of pushing it out. You can do that? I can now. Putting them on the express on the expressway. You see, it's not about you or me. It's about everyone. Go on, Joey. Go on? It's time. Move on. You can do it now. Whatever stopped you from moving on before, I'm stronger. It's not working. What? I said it's not working. It won't let me go. Try it now. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but, but I'm still stuck. Not even the power of the universe inside your head can help me move on. You tried turning it off and on again? It's gone. I'm sorry, Joey. Forget it. So, you think everyone down there is back to normal? Yes. Everyone will wake up. They won't even know they were asleep. It will be like it never happened. Yeah, we should get out of here. Okay. So, how many spooks did you manage to save anyway? All of them. All of them? Yes. Oh, I don't like this. So, um, are we talking all the spooks here in the city, or...? No. All ghosts. Everywhere. Except for me. Except for you. That's... I know. Look, don't sweat it. I mean, people are still gonna die, right? There'll be more ghosts. Eventually. Right, so when that happens, it'll be business as usual. I guess. But in the meantime, we're free. Free? Yeah. How about a movie or something? God, I haven't seen a movie in forever. You and me both. Think of all the things we can do now. Maybe I'll sleep in. Or maybe a vacation? Yeah, somewhere sunny. Huh? I'm sorry, Joey. I thought you'd be gone. I really hoped you'd be gone. I didn't want you to see this. Red? It hurts, Joey. It's everything. It's pouring into my head. It's not a metaphor, and it's not stopping. I can't hold it. You gotta try. No. It's like trying to swallow the ocean. Sooner or later, you're going to drown. No, not after what you just did. Not after everything we've done. You can't just... What? Die? I don't think... I have a choice. No. This isn't fair. This isn't right. You just saved the whole damn city. You saved me. I knew the cost. I paid it. It was worth it, wasn't it? Sure. Of course it was. I... I see them. My parents, Joey. I see them. No, stay away from them. It's not time yet. Joey, please. Okay. But before you go, I'll make you one promise. No matter how long I'm around, no matter how many hosts I see die, I'm not gonna turn into Madeline. Ever. Not if I'm a spook for a million years. I'll be a good spirit guide. Do what needs to be done. Forever if need be. No, Joey. You won't. Oh, hell's bells. Uh. What the... What did you... How? Red? Sweetheart? Rosa? Why the hell did you do this? Here. Go on, take it. 
take it. Just... But she was moving on. She saw her parents. Like, she did turn into a ghost. I don't see him anymore. I've tried, you know. I've looked. There was this pile up on the West Side Highway last week, and now people say they hear crying. So I went over there. I didn't hear or see anything. I'm normal. Listen to me, talking to myself on the street. I call myself normal. Yeah, I know. Ironic, huh? Or at least I think that's irony. You could tell me, if you were here. I'm forgetting things. About being, you know, I can't even say it. It's almost as if, now that I'm alive, I can't think about being dead. I guess that's hardwired into everybody. Turns out I'm just like everyone else in the end. But I get it now. I like being alive. Is that so wrong? Is that what I'm supposed to get from all this? That life is worth living? I guess I gotta get out there and find out for myself. Goodbye, Rosa Blackwell. I don't know how long I've got, but I know I'll see you again. Someday. But until then, I'll try to make this count. Okay? Okay. Man, the story ends like it began. Wow. That was actually a very... kind of Japanese anime ending. I feel, oh, and look, now it's just Joey, a man out of time. He's going to have to learn how to use all the doohickeys and such that he'd been talking about. He was able to get a second chance from Rosa. And just think about that, like, all there's no need for mediums. Or maybe another medium would, would actually show up over time, but... Create, oh, generational? Sick. That's some great credits right there. This game series, guys, is so awesome because they don't there's not really a lot of point and click adventure game franchises where you play multiple games and oh wow, we're going through the entire lot, aren't we? How oh, cool. Um yeah, this was a great adventure. I know y'all have been telling me for a long time that I needed to play the Blackwell games and I'm really glad that I finally got around to playing them. This was excellent. Had such a good time with this. And I was wondering if something bad was going to happen at the end to either Joey or Rosa. I had a feeling that something bad was going to, but just to Rosa after basically trying to swallow the universe. Crazy. I'm hoping that Michael and all the ones who got soul torn are back. I was actually expecting them to pop up Hey, KK. And, like, deal with Madeline. But it looks like everyone got kind of just thrown in. And if you guys have liked this series, if you haven't played Unavowed, play Unavowed because it's set in this same world. There's a whole bunch of supernatural nonsense going on. And maybe we'll see more stuff from this world as, uh, you know, from Wajidai here soon. Dave and company did a great job. Everyone, voice actors, everybody. Oh, I was wondering if they were going to show both Lauren models. Oh, and Dave did Benjiro. Huh. Man. Sorry, I'm just kind of sitting there. I'm like, it's over. It's like watching the last season of a TV series that you've been, you know, into for a while. But, and I said it before, it's such an amazing, it's to see the Wajidai game series that I know of. My first one I played was Techno Babylon to see that style start and just evolve and evolve and evolve and kind of the storytelling and everything just develop and flourish. 
Outstanding. Personally, thank all the cafes we've worked on. Wow, all of the Starbucks. That's really cool. Oh, Barnes and Noble even gets a hit. And their addresses too. Now the game may just, oh, we left three, 630 footprints over the course of the game. Cool, didn't know it would keep track of that. Well, the game may just end, oh, there it goes. There's our end screen, ladies and gentlemen. But thank you all very much for joining me on this trip. If you're just tuning into this one, watch all of them. Watch the entire series. I've got it all on a playlist. It's worth it. But um, yeah, we'll go ahead and end it here. And like I said, maybe we'll get some postscripts about this story in future Wajidai games. But if y'all have liked the series, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.